four and a half of her videos are 45 minutes. Go get on the Stairmaster and time will fly by. Just put on four and a half of these videos. And then your entire week is going to be consumed. So many red flags. I mean, you would have thought I was colorblind. Yes, ma'am. Me and Risa Tifa, we've been neighbors for going on two years. Who the f did I marry? Who the f did I marry? Who the f did I marry? I didn't watch all 50 parts of the Risa Tisa story. Did I marry? Risa, that man had you test driving BMWs, Audis and For that man to put you in a mother What's a mama? Did I marry? This man lied about everything. And when I mean everything, everything. Red flash and then a red flash. Red flash and then a red flash. Hi, I am Risa Tisa. I am the creator of the Who the F did i marry series that has been all over tiktok this series i don't even want to say it took tiktok by storm it feels like it took the entire world by storm i remember sitting locked in to these tiktoks and scrolling the comments and seeing people specifically women commenting from all over the world if you don't know which series i'm referring to it is the who the f did i marry i'm sure you've heard about it and if you haven't I want to talk about it with you today because I posted a story on my Instagram a couple of weeks ago polling, asking like who was into this, like was anyone watching this? I just was so desperately wanted to talk to somebody about this series and I'm so excited to be talking to you about it today and I'm really excited for the discussion we're going to have in the comments and I will be doing a brief summary, like I won't be doing it personally, I'm going to be sharing a, a wonderful TikTok creator who did a six minute summary and you may be wondering, oh my god, six minutes, that is the longest summary, yeah. This series, like I said, was over 50 parts. It was, I think, around seven hours of content. And this woman put it up in, I think, about a week. What she did for TikTok, she breathed fresh life into TikTok. And not only did she complete the series in just, I think it was just under a week, the 50 part series, she also then went ahead and did a live to answer any additional questions that anyone had. Like I said, I'm gonna be sharing a quick summary. We're gonna watch it together. I'm also going to have timestamps, little chapters down here. So if you have not finished the series yet, or if you don't want any spoilers, feel free to check the chapters and just skip ahead so that you don't, you know, I don't spoil it for you. But let me just pick up my margarita and let's just enjoy the next six minutes of our lives. <laughs> Summarizing all 50 parts of the Risa Tisa Who the F Did I Marry videos in one singular part. Let's flow. Risa Tisa and her ex-husband, who she calls Legion, met in March 2020, right before COVID, on two different dating apps, which was the first red flag. One was his real name, one was a nickname. They hung out a ton, and when COVID hit, they decided to quarantine at her house, which she agreed was a little fast. Not long after, she gets pregnant, they decide they need to get married. During all of this, they decide they want to buy a house, he can't show proof of funds. Unfortunately, she miscarries a child, and he doesn't even go with her to the surgery and says he has an important meeting for work. Allegedly at this time, he works as a VP for a condiment company and leaves as at 6.15 a.m. every morning and comes home at 3.34 p.m. Eventually, they continue the house search and she wants to see his accounts. He shows her a Chase savings account and a Chase checking account where he has money in it, but says he also has money from playing arena football in a U.S. bank account and an offshore account. Next on the list of things that started giving her pause was a car. She wants this dark blue BMW with cognac interior. He doesn't end up getting it for her, but he does buy a BMW, which he says is his work car that he keeps at some random building that he says the condiment company owns. Some other sketchy stuff happens. They get married January, 2021. Two weeks later, flips his vibe. Starts acting weird, accusing her of cheating, makes us some story that her ex showed up in a Dodge Charger at their house, but she confirms it's a lie because they have a ring camera. But he does little things to keep her around, like printing out an itinerary for a trip on her dream vacation to London with flights and all that jazz. They try to get another house, third time, with a different realtor, this girl named Amber, and basically they pause it because he can't show the proof of funds, and this woman, Amber, basically gives her like this aha moment where she's like, you can either buy the house with him or I got you if you want to do it by yourself. And she's like, mm, by myself is probably a better idea. Tons of other small things that happen, but are important. They do marriage counseling with a pastor, but she also like catches him doing Facebook messenger with other women that he of course talks himself out of, but he moves into the guest room. She decides to pursue a new job opportunity and needs to put his social security number on the application. The one he begrudgingly gives her is basically different than the one that's on their marriage license. She looks at both, one has no records, one is completely different than what he said he did, which was live in California and have an ex-wife there. Through all this, he gets his knee injury at work, never gets it checked out, it turns into this debilitating injury where he's basically bedridden and he just brushes it off and says it's like an old football injury. 
One day he calls her and says the stepdaughter from his California marriage had passed away and they need to give 2K towards a funeral. Of course, she says, yes, she's human. She does some more sleuthing and finds out basically that this California marriage actually happened in Georgia and he basically lied about the whole story and she was the one who divorced him and he couldn't even pay for the divorce fees. Finds the ex's phone number, ends up calling her and basically the ex is like, if you're calling me, I know it's bad. Don't believe the thing he says. Everything he is is a lie. They have a good conversation. She keeps most of it to herself. Continuing her sleuthing, she finds his mom's obituary where she learns two more things. One, he has another ex-wife that he never talked about. And two, the two sisters he claims to have don't exist. In the midst of this, he changes jobs, he's bedridden, and basically he's just sitting there slugging Powerade every day. One day, she turns on his old work phone and finds texts and confirmations that he's been seeing a sex worker. Obviously, it doesn't even surprise her at this point. One thing leads to another where June 2021, on his birthday, she confronts him in bed where he had been peeing in those Powerade bottles, which is disgusting. They have a huge blow up, they're on the phone with family members, she kicks him out he leaves with two bags of clothes eventually they're texting about the divorce she goes to file and his cousin calls her and is like who are you what's going on what's happening with this divorce he just showed up and we haven't talked to him in years basically she confirms all the stuff is completely made up that he's been saying and she's like he's been lying since he was little i'll get you in touch with his brother so you can like work this out she requests to meet Legion at a UPS so they can do the signature for the divorce papers. He shows up, same clothes, has basically been living out of his car, smells, and is even smaller than he was before. In the conversation with the cousin, she basically finds out that he has a twin, and that's basically who he's been pretending to be with the VP title, the luxury car, the family house, and she's like spiraling. She ends up calling the brother, they talk. He basically said, I haven't spoken to him in five years. And she's like, what? Every single morning we woke up and he was on the phone with you and we would like be talking to you. And basically it turns out he was talking to himself the entire time. The brother confirms that basically everything he said about his family, he made up, including like where his parents are, how they pass, what siblings he has, all this is insane. And he tells her that he has a criminal record. Then she starts doing reverse Google image searches on all these things that she found on his work phone, which were the Chase bank account statements and the BMW and all that stuff. And she basically finds out that he just found them on Google. When all this happens, his aunt calls her and is like, what's going on? He's trying to ask me for financial help. And she's like, oh yeah, we got a divorce. We tell her and she's like, oh, but what happened to the baby? She's like, we don't have a baby. And she's like, no, what? He's been coming to Augusta for months telling me he's gonna bring the little boy and that you guys are getting divorced and he's bringing the little boy with him. And she's like, that's not true. Eventually, she looks up his criminal records, finds out he's gotten arrested for things like suspended license, trespassing, but the most important one to her was that he got arrested for impersonation of an officer. Now we're in August 2021, he's basically disappeared, she can't find anything about him, and basically starts reaching out to every single person on Facebook he's ever mentioned to try to figure out where he might be. They all want nothing to do with him. She finds out that he checked himself into a hospital for two weeks so he could have a bed, ends up calling her 30 times a day, every hour of the day and she basically calls the police and is like, he's stalking me, he's harassing me. The police say there's a warrant out for his arrest. When he shows up, call us and we will come and arrest him. That's what they do. She's watching from a car across the street. They arrest him, he gets out of the car, same clothes, still living in his car, even smaller. She said he was a 3X, now he's a medium and basically he peacefully gets arrested but he wants to talk to her. They exchange a few words while the police officer is there with the body cam and she's basically like, I never wanna see you again. She gets a letter that the divorce is finalized. She's crying with relief. She also donates all this stuff to a domestic violence shelter and calls the car to get it repossessed. And she's like, I'm out of here. I'm moving. This is it. He's done. He's in jail. It's good. She's scheduled to move on August 31st and his court session on August 29th, two days before they find out the warrants expired and he's getting released on the 30th. She goes to stay with her aunt on the 30th. So there's no contention there. She basically wakes up, moves within two hours. Boom, done, doesn't hear from him until December, 2022, five months later, she's out from work from COVID. And basically he calls work trying to find her and she sends him one last message. And it's like, if you ever try to contact me again, I will get a restraining order. And she never heard from him again. That's the story. Basically, she then does like a whole Instagram live. But the moral of the story is she's an amazing storyteller. It had everyone hooked. I hope she gets a lot of brand deals. I hope she gets her BMW and gets to go on her trip to London. Obviously, do your due diligence. Talk to people. Go watch her series because um, she deserves to be supported. But I just gave you all the deets. And now do with it what you will. <laughs> Oh, okay, let me just take another drink. That was wild. Honestly, like, if you think that was wild and you haven't seen the original series, trust me, the original, like the original, the 50 part, it's a wild roller coaster ride. I highly suggest hopping on, buckling up your seatbelt, and taking that roller coaster ride. Okay, the margarita needs to go back down. And I need to finish this video before it starts kicking in. <laughs> a huge shout out to Abs Bon for doing that little. I mean, I say little six minute summary. There's nothing that I can actually think of that she really missed out that was crucial. 
I mean, you saw my reaction when she mentioned, I just, I still to this day can't get over the fact that he was having conversations with who we could only presume was himself. Like that is a level of psychotic that I just cannot comprehend. And it's terrifying. Most of the YouTube videos I've seen about this particular uh, series has actually just like downloaded the series from TikTok and put it all on YouTube. It's even got like hundreds of thousands of views there. And I mean, that's a whole nother thing. I mean, technically I think she should, Risa Tisa, Risa Tessa, should be profiting off of this story, not these random YouTube channels that have just stolen her TikToks and put them on YouTube. But anyway, that's a whole nother discussion for a whole nother video. It's basically come out and I'm sure you can probably put two and two together that this man is a pathological liar. She had a marriage and she had an encounter with a pathological liar. Now, I think one of the reasons that this took so many people's interest, especially women, was first of all, like Abby said, you know, she's an amazing storyteller. Like I found myself listening to this and just being able to picture and imagine every little detail she said. She was very, very thorough and very detailed with her storytelling, credible storytelling. I think a lot of women have had experiences with men that have either been you know, distrustful, lying, cheating, psychotic, emotionally abusive, and you know, a variety of different things that have just really scarred them. But I think a lot of women have experienced something like this, but this story that she's sharing, I think there's not many women who have maybe experienced this level of, of crazy. And the, the research is very limited on pathological liars. Some researchers theorize that around five to 13% of people may be pathological liars. So it's not a huge percentage of the population, but you know, you and I, I mean, I have my fair share of stories, but you probably do too. If you feel comfortable, leave them in the comments down below. Share your worst ever dating experience or run in with men that you have. This is something that women really connect on. Women really connected with, with this particular story because we've all had experiences with men that have been negative, but this one really, really takes the cake. What I think other than the storytelling was so beautiful about this 50 part series is it was so genuine. It was so raw, you know, it wasn't some scripted Hollywood treatment as much as I would love to see a Netflix series or a movie at some point. No pretty lights, no editing, no nothing. It was just raw, genuine. There was moments that she was most of the time coming on camera. She had those curly things, you know, those things that like we put in our hair, the heatless curls. She was just coming online so organic, so genuine, so raw, so real, sharing her authentic story. No flashy, fluffy, you know, lights, camera, action. It was just like, like sitting down with a friend and hearing a horribly traumatic story that was also strangely entertaining. You know, it was literally like listening to a friend. Ressa, Risa made you feel like you were listening to a friend. And when I actually watched the live, that live she did, after her series ended, um, where she basically just wanted to film a live just to answer any questions that people had, any follow-up questions. The amount of people that were asking questions that like just were already in the series really shows what TikTok has done to our brains and our attention span and our brain capacity. It's funny, I also saw a few critiques that she talks too slowly. And as someone who naturally is a fast talker, I did not feel that way at all. Like I just found her to be very detailed. Um, she was very thorough and she painted a really clear picture of every one of her situations, every one of her scenarios in all 50 plus parts. So I didn't find that she talked very slow. Risa chose to share her story. She chose to speak up where instead a lot of us chose silence. And since viewing her series, like after finishing it, I just felt so empty. Like I feel when I finish when I binge any, any great TV series, I felt so empty. And then I ended up finding another one that I actually haven't started yet, but it's called The Lies He Told. Um, so I might start that one next. It doesn't have as many views as, as who the did I marry, but it might, it might be good. Drop some recommendations below if you found any series or any women sharing their story similar to this since this particular series came out. And she very much made it clear that she wasn't doing it for attention. She was doing it because she thought, you know, if this was to help one person, then she, she would have felt like it was worth it. And I think there is a real fine line between, you know, trauma dumping and sharing your ne negative experiences on the internet for attention. But I actually feel like this does lead, lend more into the space of, hey, like I genuinely wanted to help and I genuinely wanted to foster a community of women and potentially 
grab someone's attention who maybe has experienced something like this because like I said before and you know maybe like you might share with me in the comments down below we've all had horrible experiences most of us have unless you married your high school sweetheart and have been together you know since you were 15 years old most of us had have had run-ins with men that have left us questioning ourselves questioning who we are questioning our instincts ignoring our instincts and getting so far into something that we don't even know what to believe and we start to distrust and, and actually second guess ourselves. And I think that what she did for women and the fact that she was able to open the the box, I suppose, open, open this kind of discussion because, you know, pathological liars exist. Even if they're not pathological, there is probably a higher percentage of people that are compulsive liars. And the fact that she was able to point out some red flags and potentially snap some women out of a trance and make them question their relationships it could very well potentially help a lot of women there was a lot of people that made content like this that just absolutely cracked me up it was not a work phone it was simply a secondary personal phone he told me it was a work phone i thought that the company was paying for the work phone that's what i thought no well and i believe i did tell him that i don't know anything about arena football that'll come into play later on so did i marry I just think it's funny that people call you Kevon and you told me your name was Kevin. Melissa, why did you watch that whole TikTok? You know my name is Kevin. My name been Kevin since we were 16. Do I? Do I really know your name is Kevin? Where'd you go to school? I went to Lakes High School with you. I mean, you don't want it to get so far that you're like literally questioning your partner for no valid reason. But I do think that this series probably was and is helpful and probably did help some women out there who are potentially dating or, or married to somebody and they just don't feel right. And I, I do think that it, it does definitely highlight that a woman's intuition is like nothing else. And we can, we can be fooled into ignoring it. We can be kind of under a spell and we can fall into illusion of what somebody is and what they portray. And it is very easy for a lot of women to lose to lose their intuition or to just simply ignore it. And I, I really think that this series is waking a lot of women up. Waking a lot of women up to trusting themselves and her vulnerability, the fact that she shared things and she even acknowledged, yeah, like this makes me look like an idiot. But the fact that she was still willing to share it makes her so much more relatable because we've all done stupid right we've all done stuff that we're like oh my god why did i do that like i knew better but the fact that she was open enough to be like yeah look i, I feel like an idiot but i'm going to share this anyway and that's just what made her so much more relatable the amount of people that have like came out and like almost riding the coattails of this <laughs> this story it's wild i even saw merch come out like i don't know if, if she brought it out or if somebody else brought out merch for her but it was like i survived legion or something like that there's been so many people coming out like even these poor men on tiktok have came out and been like hey i'm not legion i have no idea who this legion is you all are talking about uh <laughs> Where this, I think, took like a little bit of a ugh, kind of unfortunate turn in my personal opinion was that his identity was actually leaked. So people were saying he came forward. He actually didn't. He had his identity leaked. He was very much named and shamed by somebody. And Ressa, Risa, Teaser, she also actually said on that particular live that she would have really appreciated it if the person that leaked his identity would have at least given her a heads up so she could kind of get some things in order. And I do think that probably would have been a nice thing to do. Like, I just think he shouldn't have had his identity leaked. I don't think it was up to that person, but let me know in the comments down below if you have a difference of opinion. I don't think that that person should have just come in and dropped that bomb. I don't think it was their place to do that, you know, to play detective and kind of expose him like that. I just don't think it, it should have been that way, but here we are. And he's just been posting some weird shit online, okay? Some weird and my first thought was when I saw him was beauty is very much in the eye of the beholder. There's a lid for every pot, but maybe not this poor pot because this poor pot is a pathological liar and will probably never, never experience a healthy relationship after all the people that now 
know who he is. This guy is 100% mentally unstable, and I'm not at all saying that's a joke. Like, he is a pathological liar, and he is mentally unstable. Like, let's just watch. Let's watch some of his TikToks together. Are you ready for this mess? Sometimes people make the mistake by not putting the time or the effort in to their relationship, but they just want it to work, and it all flows smoothly. It doesn't work like that. Relationships are work. You got to put the work in. Don't expect to reap the benefit if you're not going to put the time in. It's another message from your guy, the relationship guy. Everybody. So he's like branding himself as the relationship guy. What's up, everybody? Out here this morning on my thug fizzle, I guess you want to say. Again, it's your guy, it's the relationship guy. I just want to drop a quick one to you real quick this morning. Um, ladies, if you on your period, that's okay. If you emotional through your period, that's okay. But the last thing you should do is make your man feel it. A lot of women make the mistake and they don't understand when they have a bad attitude. If you don't, if you have a bad attitude, stay peaceful, stay quiet, stay humble. You can drive a man crazy with a bad attitude because you're on your period and just not feeling 100%. But your period does not give you an excuse to act like a butthole. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. And again, it's your boy, the relationship guy, dropping this, dropping these tips to you, man. Y'all enjoy. <laughs> sorry, I'm just laughing because I'm reading the comments. The comments are truly gold. I'm not doing the thug fizzle. I can't take relationship advice from someone who calls. Imaginary bros every morning. Oh god, the comments, the comments are gold. You have to check the comments. This one though, like, oh. I need somebody to help me not have a big heart. Because my heart is so big, people betray me and I keep forgiving them. I need somebody to Okay, look. If you watch the R. Kelly documentary expose, you would know why that's a little bit like just maybe not the best video video to um to Make your case. He's just got some very interesting videos. Currently building my dream home after the world has tortured me for three days. I kept it a secret because the devil works in silence, but you see my God is an awesome God. He reigns as is. As his messenger, I am immensely rewarded. Come on this journey with me. Dream with Jerome, come to light. Ooh, it's just, yeah, you know, I'm torn. I'm torn because after watching that series, I do genuinely think, oh my God, thank God she made it out of that with no ties to this man. A part of me also can't help, and this is some of you are like, I, I know, I know, some of you are gonna think this is ridiculous. A part of me still can't help but feel sorry for this man. Like I genuinely do worry about his mental health because this type of like internet hatred could literally destroy someone. He posted his funeral plan um, and some people are laughing because it says under um, officiant and speakers, he's got Beyonce with a question mark. <laughs> like, yeah, Beyonce is not coming to your funeral. It's a little bit of a cry for help. Like, it's... The internet is a scary, scary place, and I'm torn between, you know, I'm glad that, that Risa was able to share this story and you know bring it to light and it was probably immensely helpful for her to to kind of move on in a way and like get i don't want to use the word revenge but just get kind of like validation for what she went through and get some type of i don't want to say reward but you know she was greatly rewarded for the absolute hell that she went through with this man but then I'm also like, oh, this man is literally being ripped to shreds on a daily basis. Um, and that worries me a little bit. But yeah, I'll let you have a look at his account yourself in full detail because there's some wild, sh there's some wild stuff on there. Really excited to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. But I guess kind of like to wrap up my closing thoughts, the algorithm blessed her with just like crazy, crazy views. When I finished the series, I think she was at like 1 million TikTok followers. She's now at 3.5 million followers. Each video has like two, three, four million. One video has like 14 million. I'm just so excited to hear what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Please share with me if you've watched it, if you haven't, what your thoughts are on it. I'm gonna have another few links for you right here. Feel free to check those out. Thank you so much for joining me in today's little bonus video and I will see you in my next one.